We're gonna go three wide here. Just feel like I have the straight line speed and boom, we're gonna get the move done into turn one. Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Welcome to another race analysis. However, this is my first race analysis from the Tri-C Carters Championship. Now, as many of you know, this year I am not only racing in the Cal Speed Sprint Series, but I now have bought my own cart, an LO206 cart, and I'm racing in the Tri-C Carters Championship, which is a championship for people who own their own carts. And the exciting part about this is you don't have the whole luck factor of dealing with what cart you get based with rental carts. However, you do have to set up your own cart and it has this whole array of challenges, but gives you a whole lot of options to customize the cart to your driving style. And it's a process I'm really enjoying. Other big difference about this is the carts are fully open wheel. There's no bumpers around the wheels. So when you're racing, you have to be a little bit more careful as a bit of drama can always happen. And in my second heat race, my good friend Albert Ye turned my cart into a motorcycle by sending me on two wheels on the Contino turn after my front wheel hit his rear wheel. So the format for this series is actually the same as the Cal Speed Super Series. And in that series, you have a practice session, a qualifying session, two heat races, and then a final. So in my qualifying session, I was P6 in my class, which I mean, that's a decent result, but I wanted to be more towards the top three is think the pace wise, that's where I'm truly at on merit. My first heat race, I was kind of in the P4, P5 range for most of the race until a little bit of chaos happened ahead of me. And then I was battling all the way up for P2 after the top three spun out. I ended up finishing that race in P3. Then in my second heat race, just didn't quite get the setup right and had not a ton of straight line speed. And as a result, I finished in P7. So for the final, we are starting in P7. So here we are getting ready for the final. And one big difference compared to the rental carts is this is a rolling start, not a grid start. So your whole goal here is basically you want to be on the back bumper of the cart in front of you and make sure you get a really good reaction time. And because these carts are four strokes, just like the rental carts, momentum is key. So as you can see, we get off the line and Albert actually stalls, not entire row. Gets really slowing down. Got Derek Esquivel on the outside. Gonna let him go through here as he just has more pace through this turn. The big thing with these carts as well is if you do crash or make contact, you can break the carts quite easily, which is expensive. And obviously if you're racing with a broken cart, you're much slower. So the big thing is of course, just risk management. At this point, we're up into P5 and I'm like, okay, we can do a lot from here. Other big important thing with these carts is the tires. Uh, they are a softer compound, but they also have a very sensitive temperature window. If the tire is not at the temperature, the cart will be sliding around. It's usually about lap one. Carts are a bit slower because you're sliding all over the place. But if you push too hard on these tires, they'll become greasy and they'll start sliding all over the place. So you don't want to overdrive them, but of course you don't want to be too slow as you don't want your tires to cool off. So at this point, my whole goal here is just following the front pack, staying with them and pulling away from the guys behind. Now, like the rental carts, the race craft of, you know, not racing all the time and knowing to slipstream people, very, very similar. So as you can see, Jose De Silva and Derek Espel going wheel to wheel up straight. We're gonna go three wide here. Just feel like I have the straight line speed and boom, we're gonna get the move done into turn one. So at this point we're up to P3 and I know, okay, pace is good. Let's keep pushing our way to the front. As you can see, just managing to be defensive. Two of them are battling and you can see massive gaps form. Cause we're going about on average 10 miles an hour quicker than the rental carts. Gaps can form a lot quicker cause you're going faster. So at this point I'm in P3 and I know that I just got to keep pushing and the two front guys, they're probably going to pull away cause they're slipstreaming off each other. Cause these carts do go faster. The slipstream matters even more cause there's more, uh, more drag from the faster you're going. Now, another interesting thing about this class of carts and the whole competition karting side where you own your own cart is you're actually not allowed to run the camera on your helmet. So there's my GoPro mount where the camera normally sits. This time it's actually sitting on the nose of the cart. It's kind of cool cause you get this F1 style view of me turning the steering wheel, which you don't normally see before. You just see the other side, which I think actually looks pretty cool. And then if you face the other way, as you can see, got a good view of the front wheel and then obviously the front wing as well. Now the big difference in speed between these and the rental carts is the cornering grip. The chassis is a lot lighter, it flexes more, and the tires have a lot more grip. So cornering wise, you're just going way quicker through most of the corners. You really notice it in the high speed turns. Power wise, this actually has a little bit less power than the rental carts, but the reason it's quicker in the straightaways is simply because it's much lighter. So at this point, I could see Derek Esquivel behind me looking to make a move as he's the quickest guy in this class. So I know if he's gonna pass me, I'm just gonna let him pass and just follow him and try to make our way to the front as he's a very experienced driver and it's actually the very first guy I met when I came to Cal Speed. So kind of cool that I'm now actually racing him for position. So as you can see, he's looking for a move on the inside of Horseshoe. I'm not quite gonna give it to him. 
and he's just going to pull out of the move. So again, on the exit heading onto the straightaway, I'm tucking in for DRS as it does have a big effect on these carts. It's about, I would say, half a tenth if you do it on two straightaways. As you can see, not quite going for the move as he's deciding to actually push on me, which is fine. I'll stay in P3. And you can see Jose Silva right behind him as well. So I got two very fast drivers behind me. I know at this point, I just got to keep pushing and just try to get the most consistent laps in. Because if I make one mistake, the two of them are by. He's going to look for a move into the hairpin, makes the stick. And I'm just going to stay in his rear bumper. It tells me to push forward so we can get to the front guys. So we're both sharing the same goal here. Let's just make our way forward. So you can see the slipstream gets sucked right into his rear bumper. I'm just pushing right on him. So we got Jose Silva behind me in cart number 46. Going to look for a move, jumps that inside curb, doesn't quite get the exit at turn four. And I'm just going to see him. Look at that. Already a gap forming. Nice thing about these carts, like the momentum based driving is taken to a whole nother level. So at this point, we're going wheel to wheel with Jose Silva for the upcoming horseshoe. He's going to look for the move on the inside. I seem to have a bit more pace on the outside, but he's still going to make the move stick. So at this point, I know I'm very similar to him on pace, and I just have to stay with him because I do want a top five, and if I can get past him, that'd be great. So again, he's pointing to push forward. I'll take the slipstream from him. The one thing on that cart this day is we just didn't seem to have a ton of straight line speed compared to our competitors. So I just really had to manage that and find any possible way. And usually the big way to gain speed in these carts is of course slipstreaming. But the hard part is when you're down on straight line speed, it's hard to catch up. As you can see right on the rear bumper of Jose, but I just don't quite have the straight line speed to get by him at turn one. As you'll see, we're definitely quicker than him through turns one through three. But again, I just can't find a way by. So at this point I'm thinking, all right, fine, I'll stay with him for P5 and maybe on the last lap look for a move because we just do not seem to have the pace to quite get by him. So here we are a few laps later and you can see the gap is kind of remaining the same. So I'm looking, I see I can maybe get a better exit here, but nope, just don't quite have the acceleration to pass him on the straightaway. So this is kind of getting painful at this point as I know I'm just super close to him, I just can't quite get by. Looking for a move here again, no real opportunity. And the thing with these carts is you can't really risk it and go for a move that's going to be on contact because you have a high chance of crashing out. So here we are, two laps to go, looking for any kind of potential move. Just don't quite have the speed, looking for the Long Beach turn. Again, can't quite make the move. The thing with these cards is if you do send it, you have to make sure you get a good exit. Otherwise, everyone's just going to fly by you. And that's a problem. So here's the white flag, last lap, and I'm looking for any kind of move. At this point, I'm willing to take a risk. It is the last lap after all. Again, no gap here to go for move at turn four. Let's try for the hairpin coming up in a few turns. But again, I'm just not quite close enough to even make that move stick or even consider it. But at this point, I'm just trying to get absolutely everything out of this cart and just try to find a way by. And you can see, start to close the gap a little bit on the exit, but I know straight line speed wise, we just don't quite have it compared to him. Now what's interesting is there's all these pieces flying at the camera and Jose's exhaust pipe actually broke in half, which is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So that's what all that is, uh, which is very odd, to be honest. <laughs> so at this point, we got two more corners to go. I'm looking, starting to close in, starting to close in, starting to close in, again, just not quite close enough. And so I'm just looking for any kind of move and we seem to get a better exit here. Now at this point, I'm like, all right, let's go wheel to wheel, see what we can do, but just not quite close enough. So. There you go, P4 in my first ever competition kart race of the season. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with that. Considering our pace throughout the day to end with the top five, it's pretty awesome. And to be that close to a podium, very encouraging. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.